Dan Wojcicki, uh, co-founder and CEO of 23andMe. We are super excited to be here today. I feel a little bit like we're in like a college reunion because, <laughs> <laughs> because we've worked together for so long. Um, so Emily Drabant conley um, runs our um, business development team and all of our partnerships. And she originally joined and um, was on the, on the um, research team yep. and would lead partnerships, came out of her PhD program. And Shwu, Shirley Wu, um, has been here, I don't know, 10 years? Almost, nine and a half. Nine and a half years um, for so long, has survived um, so many ups and downs within 23andMe and came here also out of her postdoc or PhD, PhD. program. PhD program and was writing reports and um, and then and now she's like taken over all of health products. She loved products. it so much. <laughs> she loved it so much that we just um, never left. We that you guys never left. And so it really <laughs> is um, like I said, it's kind of uh, we would if even if we weren't on live, we would all be sitting here like this just That's hanging true. out. That's true. Um, so today we actually have some we're gonna talk about health. Um, and like the health product in general. And like I said, I am gonna defer most of the conversation because I, I have my subject matter experts here. Um, but first we're gonna have a few fun facts and just like one of my fun facts about um, people who work here because I'm, I, I say every day, like I come here every day because, um, because of the people I get to work with and so they're such a pleasure. And so one of my um, favorite aspects about people is people have very interesting, diverse interests. And so one of, the most interesting aspects about Shirley is um, how much she loves to cook, which is very different from me because I can come home at night and I can easily eat a block of cheese and be happy. Oh and <laughs> and Shwu is the one who introduced me to um, this fancy portable slow cooking, oh. the slow the cooker wonder. bag. Have you ever seen oh, yes. the Wonder Bag? I've eaten food from your so slow cooker. So I almost bag feel before. like it's an Amazon commercial here, yeah. but like the Wonder Bag that will like. You can put your pot in and she'll bring it to work. Yep. And it's like a giant cozy for your <laughs> for your casserole dish and it slowly cooks all day. <laughs> and on top of that, Shirley also has a number of chickens. And they I have really all good names. names. Yes. They have really good names. Yes. They are rapper chickens. So we have Tupac and Tupac. Missy Omelette. That was so close. <laughs> yep. Notorious E G G. Yep. And we had one Sir Peeps a lot. No. That doesn't peep anymore. It didn't last long. No, no more oh, peeping. Sad. So Shirley's also part time on the marketing team. <laughs> awesome. All right. Fun facts. Am I supposed to do a fun fact about you now? A fun fact about Anne. So we had um, this was at like right, maybe right after I joined the company. There was a congressional hearing oh, yeah. that Anne <laughs> was attending, um, and you, I think, didn't pack appropriately, which is not oh. surprising <laughs> knowing you. And so you showed up with one shoe. Oh no! It was, and, I and left then the flip flops. I left the shoe at the hotel, That's really and so funny. I had one shoe. So I had the congressional hearing, and they're like, "Are you ready?" I was like, "How did I'm, you leave the hotel with one?" Well, because like I left Cinderella. it in flip flops, oh, okay. and then I put the shoe on, and then we got there, yeah. and, and and the senator was, he's like, "Are you ready?" I was like, "I'm ready." I was like, "I just want to explain that I only have one shoe, <laughs> and the other one's coming." <laughs> we like to keep it fun. Here. Well, I'm I'm obviously not the one. Yeah who's like tends to be so formal. It's true, it's true. So that's my fun and fact. There are many more fun and facts. And you have a fun fact about Emily? Fun facts about Emily. So these yeah. actually stem from before she was at 23 Me. Oh. oh. So I had I did some some research into yeah. this. Um, so apparently you used to ride a motorcycle? I did. Is that? Oh, wow. It's true. I dated someone that had a motorcycle uh. and then we broke up and I decided to buy my own motorcycle. <laughs> You're like, I'll just shoot, but I'll keep the motorcycle. Pretty much. Yeah. And yeah. no longer riding them. No, not no, be. Yeah. no. No, no, now I'm a mama, so yeah. it's good. No more motorcycles for me. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, All right, well, we can launch we'll into health. our health product questions. And a motorcycle is not part of <laughs> True. our health. It's not good for your health. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an indicator of how she runs no. other aspects. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and this one's for you. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> what do you feel is one of the top challenges consumers have with modern health care, and how can 23andMe help? Oh, um... I think one of the top, so I mean, I think the big picture, there's two elements. Like one of the big picture top challenges in healthcare is that healthcare I think is not fundamentally focused on your best interest. So for instance, like healthcare is not necessarily, like it's very much focused reactive. Like if you come in and you have an illness or, you know, we had a family member who was just in a bad, you know, biking accident and, you know, Stanford was amazing and the trauma and like all that, like it's amazing how that can work. But if you come in and you're like, hey, I just, 
um, you know, I'm high risk for type 2 diabetes and I'm overweight and I have a family history, they kind of are going to send you home and be like, we'll come back when you're diabetic. Um, so I think one of the hard parts of, of healthcare is that it's really hard to prevent and it's hard to like, we don't have a lot of information about how to stay healthy. And it's like one of the core elements that we're trying to do here is like, if I give you this information, I'm trying to help you prevent. Like if you're high risk for a blood clot, you know, a lot of people, a lot of insurance companies will tell me like, well, you can just treat a blood clot. And no one's really that excited to just treat their blood clot. Like I'd rather just not have that blood clot. And so a lot of what we try to do at 23andMe is to give people information about what your risks are. And it's a better proxy in many ways than a family history. And, you know, it's kind of saying like, okay, here's the deck of cards that you were dealt. What are all the different things that you should think about? And I think about even in like the Wojcicki family, it's like, okay, well, we know, you know, my father has atrial fibrillation, my grandmother had macular degeneration. Both of those are things that have high genetic components. So like, you know, what do we do with like all the kids, like of thinking about that? And my sister and I, we were talking about it actually the other night, it's like, you know, kids who are high risk for macular degeneration, like they're gonna be more proactive in their 40s. So like there's a lot that you can start to do then to be proactive about your health. And if you know what your risks are, I think that everyone would much rather prevent disease than just necessarily treat it. That's my thought. Great, Any Thank rebuttals? You. No. <laughs> <laughs> I concur. Can't argue with that. Okay, good. Can any of you talk a little bit about the difference between the Ancestry only product and the Health and Ancestry product? Maybe you, Shirley? Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Um, you know, the Ancestry service is obviously awesome. Um, lots of customers love it. It tells you so much about where your DNA is from. Um, the Health and Ancestry service gives you so much more information also about just you know why you might be the way you are. Um, and things, like Anne was just saying, things that you could potentially watch out for in the future and take action to prevent. Um, so it covers everything from traits like um, you know, uh, you know, physical characteristics you might have, um, you know, certain preferences and reactions to the environment, um, wellness-related um, traits like your weight and sleep, um, all the way to disease risks and um, uh, conditions you might carry genetic risks for that you could pass on to your children. So it covers the whole range of things that we could potentially learn from our DNA um, beyond just, you know, where you're from. Mm -hmm. It's one thing people don't realize, too, is a lot of the ancestry information is related to health. And so people come to us, obviously, and they ask the question all the time, like, wow, what's the difference between you and the other products that just have ancestry? I'm like, like, a lot, like, because, <laughs> because we have health. And if you know, like people come to me every so often, they're like, wow, I learned from you that, um, you know, I'm 50% I'm Ashkenazi Jewish, and everyone in my family has this history of, you know, of cancer. Like, should I get tested for like, for the health side? I'm like, yeah. Like there's a lot of populations that are associated with different conditions. So in some ways, like ancestry is just part of the story. You need to actually, like that's part of the reason why we've always said, we give people some that, that you know, the entrance just in like learn about some of the ancestry, but understanding how your ancestry connects to your health is mm -hmm. really important. Yeah. And so it's one of the things that we like, we realize a lot of people who just first learned about the ancestry product, then really like they got the health information. They're like, wow, like I had no idea, especially there was these kinds of connections. Yeah, and actually that's really cool how you laid out that journey of like informational discovery. because. If you learn, you know, you're 50% Ashkenazi Jewish, and then you learn, hey, certain populations actually have a higher risk of certain conditions, and then you find out, do I carry that genetic risk? Yeah. And that's another piece of information. Now that you know that, now there's some other step in the journey you can take from there. So it's just a continuous journey of discovery that way. Totally. Hey guys, so we're getting some feedback that it's a little quiet. So we're oh. wondering if it's possible if you guys could actually hold the mic, if you guys yeah. don't mind. The or giant mic. In. Well, I'll lean in. We How's that? Lean in. <laughs> do up. Okay. <laughs> awesome. All right, Shirley, along those lines, um, what are some of the health reports that you want to see returning to the product and why? A lot. There's so much more we could, we could uh, have. Um, so some of the, I think, major uh, areas of information that we're really excited to bring back. Um, so s some of you may have heard we recently got FDA authorization to provide information about how people process certain medications. 
Um, so we're working on getting those reports, um, you know, just making sure that we meet all those requirements before we release those. We're excited to get those back in. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of conditions that are very complex. There's lots of factors that influence whether someone develops them, like you know, diabetes and heart disease and all these diseases that affect a lot of people, um, but they are you know, complex conditions. Um, th that's just a huge area that our current product um, doesn't cover that well, but we are working hard to, um, to bring into the product. Right. And then we just got our fifth, um, our fifth FDA authorization for colorectal cancer. So we now, in addition to breast and ovarian, we can now report on colorectal, which is a really important um, you know, milestone for the, the product. Emily, this one's for you. How does the research uh, that 23andMe does translate to the reports that we provide customers? Oh, that's a great question. You know, there's such an interesting synergy between um, the research that we do. So for those who aren't as familiar, when people join 23andMe, they're invited to participate in research. It's totally opt-in. Um, and uh, about 80% of our customers choose to opt-in and participate. And then we ask them questions through online surveys uh, about diseases they have or their background. Uh, and then we use that um, information for research, so to better understand genetics of disease, but we also use it to inform our product. Um, and now that we've grown so much in size, we have you know millions of folks that have done the 23andMe test and that are participating in research. It's become this really rich um, resource for um, helping us you know, create new products and features. And so, for instance, we have a report on um, genetics and body weight, uh, which is not surprising that like how much you weigh is influenced by genetics, it's influenced by other things too. And so the team was able to um, use our own data to create essentially the, the like best and most predictive model of genetics and body weight that exists. We have data from hundreds of thousands of customers that helped us create that. And so now when you log in, you actually get a report on genetics and body weight that is fueled from that research of 23andMe consumers. And so this is a direction that the company's really been going in um, more and more is like how do we use that data to create better products and features so that we can tell people more interesting things about themselves. That's great. And it can help people with their New Year's resolutions. Exactly. <laughs> Shirley, how does 23andMe determine what trait reports uh, we include in the product? Um, so there's a lot of uh, factors we consider. Um, you know, A, just how interesting is it? Are, do a lot of people want to know about this certain trait? Um, and you'd be surprised, you know, there's so many weird quirks of human behavior and, um, you know, so there's a lot of uh, options we have. And so we, we have to look at both, you know, the interests and how relevant it is to how many people, but also how much data we have. Um, so Emily was just talking about this rich resource we have with customers participating and providing survey answers. And so we need to have enough of that kind of data to be able to do the kinds of studies and analyses to, to really develop predictions um, around those traits. Um, so if both of those things work out, then it's just a matter of you know, creating a compelling report around it and going through all the, you know, the work of building that, that feature. Um, but you know, those are some of the things that we consider. You know, itch response, which I feel like is it's one of those things that perhaps may not get studied in like an NIH grant, but but customers care. Like Anyone I care. Who's on camping, you're like, why do I keep getting bitten? And yeah, and my so friend has <laughs> like nothing, you yeah. know. And so genetics are part of that. Cool. And I think traits is one of the things that's really fun, where everyone in the company has an idea. So there was one weekend where all these airplanes were um, getting grounded in Arizona. And because of the heat and so of course like i call our head of marketing at the time and she's like or who's still here and she's like oh i'm flying to arizona like i love 130 degree heat and i was like what's wrong with you and she's like i love it and i was like there's there's only certain people who clearly love that kind of extreme heat and i was like that's going to be a quick question so like we put it in like the, that's the kind of the way these things happen is like you think of something I called them the data collection team. I was like, let's add that in as a quick question. And then you can start to see, like, are, do some people just like really yeah. love extreme heat and some people love extreme cold? And that's kind of how a lot of these things start to come up. Like we can see, like again, cavities. you're never- Cavities, you, you, cavities you. is me because I have no cavities. <laughs> I was like, well, am I, am I really special? You are. Or am I just like a little <laughs> special? Um, but a lot of it is that, you know, people can relate to traits. And it's fun, and you're right, you're never gonna get an NIH grant, so it's kind of very unique to 23andMe, is that we can actually do all this research that people can relate to. Like again, my favorite from last time, the chocolate ice cream versus vanilla ice cream. Like, 
who would have known that that's a genetic preference? Um, but people can relate to that, and it's really fun, and it's super fun for people in this building to kind of look around and be like, so why are you like that? Yeah. Let's study it, Emily. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> Put out a question. Right. So speaking of traits, sometimes the report doesn't match the actual trait that the person uh, shows. So how are these calculated, and how can we make the predictions better? Yeah, so um, our trait reports generally look at a, a bunch of different genetic factors, and then often also things like your sex, um, potentially your ethnicity or your age, um, factors that may influence whether someone has a trait or not. Um, but you know, we're still learning a lot about what makes people the way they are, um, and we only you know have uncovered a subset of those factors, and so. Our predictions are based on the best science that we have, um, but there's so much more to learn. And so um, we know that you know traits aren't determined by any one thing often, um, and so that's why these things aren't 100% predictive. Um, but we try and give those percentages of how many people with this certain genetic profile said that they have this trait, and that gives you a sense of there's some people who say they have this and some people who don't. And depending on your genetics, maybe more you're more likely than not to have that. Um, but it's still not 100%. And like genetics and body weight is a good example where um, genetics are really important. They definitely influence how much you weigh. But if you don't exercise and eat very poorly, then that is also going to have a very impact, a very big impact on how much you weigh. And so for many of the traits that, you know, sometimes we know what those things are. And sometimes they're factors that we don't yet understand that may impact, you know, why your hair is straight or wavy, things like that. Anne or Emily. Uh, Carrie from Facebook would like to know, health-wise, how do you understand your reports, and what doctor do you see to understand the results? Oh, that's a great question. You know, there's a lot embedded in the health report, and I think um, maybe we can talk about a couple of the categories. So one of the categories is carrier status. So these are um, diseases that are um, tend to be somewhat genetically determined, and so we can tell you if you are a carrier for something like cystic fibrosis. Um, it doesn't mean, if you're a carrier, it doesn't mean that you will develop the disease, but if you have a baby with someone that's also a carrier, then your child could, could potentially be born with that condition. So for that whole category of reports, um, that's really relevant to people that are thinking about having kids. I have, I'm a mom, I have two kids myself, and so when I was pregnant, my OB wanted to know if I had been tested for cystic fibrosis, and I I was able to say yes, I have my 23andMe results and share those with my doctor. Um, and then that information was actually put into my chart and I didn't have to get tested again. So that is kind of relevant um, in sort of the family planning. That would be in somewhat contrast to the genetic health risks. So these are um, conditions that are not genetically determined, but where genetics can influence your risk. Um, up or down. So for instance, um, risk for uh, hereditary thrombophilia, these are the blood clots. Um, and that information it's quite handy to have that in advance of actually needing it, but sharing that with your doctor um, at various points in your care, if you're about to have surgery, if you're getting prescribed, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, the pregnancy, the pill, <laughs> birth control pills, uh, those types of things, um, you know, it's really, really good for your doctor to have that information. So it kind of depends a little bit on which result you're talking about, um, sort of what the opportune time is, but we want to make all that information available to our customers so they can share it as needed. Mm -hmm. I think one thing just relevant to the question of like what doctors to go to, um, it's one thing that I think we we recognize a lot of physicians are not trained on genetics, yeah. and so it's definitely it's it's a gap that we have. And Twenty Three Me has a medical you know affairs team that is definitely thinking about more and more how can we make sure that we have education programs for physicians. So we do, for instance, have continuing medical education out there specifically about genetics about you know, some of the content that we have in reports. And so the main thing I can say is like when I go to, like for my physician, um, when I brought them my kids' reports, like I printed it out so that they actually had the whole scientific backgrounds because for a lot of physicians, yeah. some of this information is new and what exactly to do it, but we try to make those reports, or surely I should try to make those reports pretty comprehensive. So it's a backgrounder really for a physician as well, especially the technical details if they wanted that. Um, but more and more we'll see 23andMe making sure that we are helping the physician community know what to do this with this information. And, and part of it, there's like a whole new world coming that is, you know, doctors on demand and telemedicine and a lot of those physicians are helping people think more and more about prevention and even like the physicians that are within a retail store or the urgent care centers. So there's a new world that is coming that's thinking more and more about the preventative care and like where is in the right place. And it's not always a physician. Right. You know, it could be a health coach, could be others. So 
that's part of what like the world's really changing is how to use this information. So I agree. Like there's times where, you know, one thing I'd also say is that it's important for physicians to have it, but it's also important for families to have this information. So like people, like I have a friend who had a stroke who like I called as soon as I heard that she had a stroke, I called her doctor and it was like, she's a carrier for factor five. Like she is higher risk for clotting and that does then have a different triage of treatment. So it's helpful for your family also. It's part of the reason why, again, when we think about connections within 23andMe and having the family features, like knowing like you all take care of each other. Mm -hmm. And so creating that village where like you can, again, my sister and I were sitting there talking about like, hey, like everyone's genetic information. And you know, how do you help manage all of that? And you all help each other. So it's important for the physicians to know your family, and I think that we create a lot of content so that it's a pretty robust experience and you can know how to follow up. Great, and just to make note mm -hmm. um, for our listeners uh, that we're not testing for every single variant mm -hmm. uh, for each of the diseases. Uh, we make clear in the reports which uh, variants we do test for, and there are certainly other non-genetic factors. We're just telling you what's in your DNA. Yeah, of course. Great. One last question, mm -hmm. and this could be for uh, all of you. What would be the one takeaway that you want uh, our consumers to have after doing 23andMe? You can start. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh. We can each do one. Okay, we can each mm -hmm. do one, the takeaway. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. Can I do two? All right. One is that I, that I think is really cool, and people forget this all the time. Um, it, maybe I'll start with the other one that there it's really interesting i think like what is impactful for one person is different than for another and so i i think like having an open mindedness when you look at your 23 me data like you never know what part may be the most interesting for you i think we have people come in thinking it's going to be something ancestry and then they find something unexpected in health um so i think that like but there's always something interesting in there and then i think the piece that is so cool that um people i think most people don't realize is that if you look between any two human beings we're over 99.5 percent genetically identical like completely identical over 99 percent um, because most of our dna is about how to make an eyeball and build a heart and make us a human and not a bumblebee or a you know banana or a gorilla um and so it's incredible like i just think that's so remarkable yeah, 90 that over that 0.5 percent for all the diversity that we have it's like so it's so incredible to me so i think that's a good thing especially in these times to remember yeah. My, mine Steal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, mine is a little bit related to what Emily was just saying. It's it's just kind of saying that you can learn about your genetics. Like it's it's not rocket science. Um, genetics, a lot of people think, is just like the scientific concept that's kind of reserved for people with special training. But genetics is about all of us, and it's about you. And anyone can really learn about this. Um, and that's, I think, part of why this company was started was to really democratize access to this information and just help people see that like this information is for everyone. Um, and you never know what you might discover from that. So I think that's super cool. I love hearing this. Um, so I was going to say, I think one thing that's really fun that we've seen with customers, especially customers who've been around for a long time, is um, the state of science is continuously evolving. And so that's like one of the really fun things that the research team here does is we're constantly trying to make discoveries. But the NIH gives billions of dollars a year every year, like trying to make more genetic discoveries. And so kind of to your point, like we're 99.5% the same and this 0.5% variability we're just barely scratching the surface of what that means and so we keep uncovering and it's like this I mean for me like I tell my kids I was like it's like Christmas every day in the company and like every day you come in there's like new journals coming up like there's publications like we had something out just about like you know genetics of risk like it's so interesting like I had one day I'd met all these people who like love skydiving out of airplanes. They'd done over like 5,000. But she, I told her, I was like, oh, I have a finance background. I used to short stocks. And she's like, oh, I would never do that. That's so risky. And I was like, what? Um, so like risk, like it's so interesting. Every single day you're learning something new out there. And it's so cool because it's also, it's about you. Like that's the thing that's like the best. Like sometimes you read about, you know, again, I love all the space research and astronomy, but like genetics research, like, it's applicable to all of us, every single person. And kind of to your point, like, I love it. It's the beauty. It's like everyone, everyone can understand it. Like you absolutely, like, you don't need a degree. You don't even need the high school education. Like anyone can understand about genetics. Like 
it's one of the most important aspects for me in the company is like we really believe in people like you don't necessarily have to have a physician you know overseeing this you don't need the genetic counselor like you can learn it and you're gonna be on this spectacular journey with us for your entire life and so it's super fun and it's super interesting <gasps> that's what we have for you Thank yay you to the three of you. i really do feel like we should know, we should I like know. him a song <laughs> You sing. You actually do sing. <laughs> you do sing. I was going to say, you just sang a song. I remember. Yeah. At my birthday. Chromatone. It was so. Chromatone. The chromatones. Our acapella group. The, I amazing. love that. Yeah. Okay, then it's Many for you. Sounds. You can sing something. <laughs> you can sing. Next time. We'll do it. Yeah, next time we'll sing. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, you guys. <laughs>